Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. We have an update to a story we first told you about Wednesday involving a registered sex offender speaking to a class in Elkton. Following last night's special school board meeting, both the teacher who invited Andrew Polly to the school and the district superintendent offered to resign. The meeting also saw the board considering two new policies, one to increase visitor oversight and one to allow the board to ban individuals from school grounds. Andrew Polly was charged with loitering in a safe zone stemming from being at the Elkton School. Rapid City Police are looking for an escaped inmate. Kobe Sansosi ran from correctional staff following a medical appointment in Rapid City yesterday afternoon. San Sosi is a 22-year-old Native American male who stands 6 feet 2 and weighs approximately 180 pounds. He's currently serving sentences for grand theft and possession of a controlled substance out of Pennington County. If you see San Sosi or have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to contact law enforcement immediately. Ceasefire and pro-Palestinian protests are being seen across the nation on college campuses. Over 200 people have been arrested just this week. A Miller, South Dakota native who now attends New York University said on, says on Monday the campus held a solidarity encampment where students set up tents. All student organization of these solidarity encampments is just to show solidarity. Everyone who's been organizing them has spoken out very firmly against any sort of anti-Semitic action, any sort of disrespect to university facilities. One resolution bill proposing a de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel was introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives about a week after the October 7th attack. That bill has not seen any action since October 25th after being referred to the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. And now let's get a check on today's stormy weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Lauren. Good morning, everybody. Yes, we do have that chance for a strong to severe storms later this afternoon and evening. In the meantime, this morning, at the top of the hour here at 7 o'clock, uh, we've been following these gusty winds. In fact, we do have a couple of uh, wind sensors in between some of these points of over 60 miles per hour. But you do see the wind gust in Sioux Falls at 41, Sheldon, Iowa at 44, Morris coming in at 43. So we do have the strong winds this morning behind all the rain that fell during the overnight hours and into early this morning. So that will happen here probably for the next couple of hours. During the late morning hours, expect those gusty winds in southeastern Kelloland. Temperatures today will reach the 50s and 60s as we will have to watch for developing showers, thunderstorms today. There again is that risk for severe weather. It's an enhanced risk what you see in orange from Sioux City, Storm Lake, and to the south, and then we have that slight risk of severe weather highlighted in yellow, Yankton, Vermilion, Lamar, Spencer, Iowa, while uh, north of that area, that marginal risk. We are looking at thunderstorms to redevelop after the midday hour. We'll have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. A horrific car crash more than 10 years ago west of Sioux Falls nearly took the life of a young man. But Dylan Leslie Young, who is now paralyzed, is learning to drive again using a specially equipped van. Literally, it's like a video game. You're controlling gas brake and steering all in one device, which, as he will tell you, it's not as simple as it looks. Leslie Young says it's going to take a lot more practice, plus he has to save enough money to buy a van and get it specially equipped, so there's no timetable on when he'll be driving on his own again. The rising stars of mixed martial arts will be stepping into the cage tonight at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls. A crew of more than a dozen people spent yesterday morning and early afternoon building the cage and stage for LFA 182. The LFA CEO says about 35% of the current UFC roster are LFA alumni. So what the fans can expect is action-packed night of fights and the great thing is, is that you come here and watch fights tomorrow night, I guarantee you about a half dozen of these people within the next 12 months, you'll be seeing, uh, they'll be competing in the UFC. Tickets are still available online or through the Sanford Pentagon box office. Once the event wraps up in Sioux Falls, the next competition is in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? 
Okay, a lot to get to here. First of all, as Scott mentioned here, as of uh, 7 o'clock, we've been watching the winds really cranking up in northwest Iowa. We've had a couple of winds around Ireton, Iowa, uh, upwards of 70 miles an hour. Now, not everybody's going to get that kind of wind, but we are watching the general wind field on the backside of this complex of rain, which is jetting out very quickly. We've had some response to that, and we're going to kind of circle and highlight some of these 50 to 75 mile an hour winds in that short range forecast. Generally speaking, a lot of numbers are popping up between 40 and 50 now in southeast South Dakota and uh, into northwest Iowa and a little bit of southwest Minnesota. If you look carefully at the radar review, do you see the dry punch? It's really obvious. It's a sharp line cut off on the rainfall reflectivity on Doppler radar that's running now to Watertown to Marshall. Now that is part of this whole ingredients list today for severe weather. We're in training some dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So in the short run, that'll cut us off for some rain, but I would continue to watch for some redevelopment closer to the low circulation in central Nebraska. We're probably even going to brew up some new thunderstorms before midday southwest of Sioux Falls. There's another round here where, again, that would be before the, uh, the bigger round of severe weather enters the picture. It's been a wet start to the day. We already have rain gauge reports of three quarters of an inch to an inch in and around the Sioux Falls area. About the same near Huron. Lesser amounts in Aberdeen, but again, these numbers will continue to tick upward for many of us today as rain redevelops. Severe weather, so there it is on the maps. Again, south of Sioux Falls is the highlight. Uh, we're going to pick on Yankton, Vermilion, probably Alcester in our viewing area, crossing over into Sioux County, Iowa. And there will be the potential for tornadoes within some of these storms. If I was to pick one thing today in this set of ingredients would be the tornado risk is my most concerning element primarily out of our coverage area i would say sioux city southward to omaha there's a much higher chance that a couple of these storms are going to produce some fairly significant tornado activity today so if you're traveling that direction on i-29 i want to get that story out there that you just need to be vigilant be aware of the weather watch for any tornado watches and warnings that come out as uh, we go into the afternoon, likely coming out after 2 p.m. There's enough instability or juice in the atmosphere coming up with that strong southeast wind that is going to nose into southeast South Dakota. Now, Sioux Falls is still a little bit farther north, and we think the worst of that will, again, stay south of Sioux Falls. But as always with weather, I like to make sure we're just keeping an eye on things, and that's what our job will be here in the Storm Center between 2 p.m. and 7 o'clock this evening would catch a lot of that. Now, future casts, when we incorporate the rain product here, you can see it's trying to flare up some new development. I'll be curious to see how effective this is by 10 o'clock this morning if we start to get some new flare-ups. Um, at any rate, that's one thing to consider through midday today. And then if I step out of the way, we'll kind of watch and, and pull this view down here west of Yankton. Do you notice those red spots on radar? Yes. Well, that's all connected to those really nasty storms in eastern Nebraska. But on the South Dakota side, the farther north and the farther west we go, the less likely it is to be uh, as intense. But there's still storm action there, and uh, it is a wise idea to keep watching the weather, and especially these hot spots around Yankton to Sioux City. It's still possible tornadoes could occur in that zone. And if they do fire, they'll be moving from southwest to northeast, and they'll be moving fast. There's a lot of mid-level winds moving at least at 50 miles an hour. So just be on the lookout for things today and be make sure, making sure that you're aware of the weather. And it's always a wise idea to have your severe weather safety plans in place as we are now in that season. And that's kind of what we're drawing up on our northwest Iowa maps. Again, the worst of the weather will be south. I do think that is the case today. And then the rest of the weekend, we're not done with rain. We're going to have more precipitation coming back in Saturday night into Sunday, and that'll likely affect uh, most of Kettle Lamb. And did I mention the word snow? Well, no, I haven't yet, but I need to for Sunday morning in north central Kettle Lamb. It could get cold enough for some snowflakes on that Sunday forecast, so it's going to turn chilly there. Sioux Falls could still manage close to 60 on Sunday, though, with the rain and the thunderstorm chances. Monday, Tuesday, we start to clear this out. Looks like the weather does settle down the middle of next week. But the rain totals at the end of the weekend are going to be an inch or two at least. That's a bottom line uh, for many of us. Some local totals will easily eclipse two inches 
out of these two storm systems. And note the Black Hills. You had storms last night. You're going to get some more rain off and on here for the weekend. Check out the latest information online at Kettleland.com.